Hello everybody and welcome back to today's video. Today we are checking out how you can update your callouts from the old API to the new API for 5PD, which supports the 1.1 release. Um, callouts should be backwards compatible for a little while, I believe, um, but it's always better when you are making callouts to update to the latest API version to make sure everything works correctly because there could still be bugs and other things. Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and download the new API and convert our old callout we made in the last callout video to this new API. Because there's been a few changes that we need to do, a few things we have to make and uh, change up. So anyway, in order to do this, we're going to download the new API uh, file. So you're going to go to the 5PD API uh, GitHub, go over to the release tab. And if you don't have this type of uh, new UI type for GitHub, uh, the release tab will be under here where it says com commits and branches and everything in the old version. So then you're just going to go to the release tab and just download the latest edition. We're not going to download the Nugget edition. That's for if you're using that framework. We're just using the default framework. So we're going to download the 5pd.api v1.0 rar. And you can see it's downloaded in a new rar file. For us, we're just going to go ahead and open this up. And you can see we have two files, the 5pd.net and the 5pd.net XML. We're going to be using the 5pd.net.dll for our project. Project. Now, so if you don't remember in our last video is we added our callout API to our dependencies folder. We're going to go ahead and delete this from our current project. So we're just going to press delete on here, delete the one reference. You can see everything's gone red. That is perfectly fine. We're going to be changing this and importing our new 5pd.net.dll. So with our new 5pd.net.dll file, we're going to go ahead and drag it into our 5pd dev folder where we had our callout API originally. You can see I already have mine dragged in here. So you're just going to drag it into the folder where you had your callout stuff before, and we're going to go ahead and import it. So you're going to go back into your file here, go to dependencies and press add reference, and then press add from. And you can see you want to navigate to the folder where you have your new 5pd.net.dll file and just double click that and you can see most of the errors have gone away or if you actually import it correctly they would. So to import you can either go over it and manually import by putting it up here or you could press uh, alt enter and it will automatically import for you. So you can see instead of call out API it's now 5pd.api and most of the errors went away. There's still a few errors because we actually have to convert some stuff in this file to the new API. The first thing is, is this probability up here is no longer configured inside of the code. So we're going to just go ahead and delete this last probability line and you can see the top error has gone away there. So you can see now it's just the test, author name, version number. And I'm just going to up the version number considering this is our second version of the callout. Then the second thing we're going to change is over here in our uh, public uh, call for this class and that's going to be changing this int base. This was changed and now it's int info and just go ahead and keep it. You can see the error has gone away now. You just change that from int base to int info and it will go ahead and change the location, which is pretty cool. We're gonna go down to our public async override task int um, and we're gonna change this from int to on accept. Just make sure on and accept are like this. So capital O, capital A. And we're gonna change the on accept down here to int blip, if I can spell right. There we go, int blip. And you can see that error has gone away as well. That is all we needed to do in here. Um, that is all you have to do to update your callout. If you have more uh, like intensive code stuff, there are a few other things you're gonna need to change, um, but I didn't include that in our last video, so we don't have to change it. And going forward, we'll already make those changes considering we're on the new API now. Now, there's one thing that they changed in terms of this info here. So your short name, callout description, response code, start distance. If you change like your short name or your callout description or anything, you're gonna have to call um, update data, update that in the MDT. I'm just gonna call it right here so we can use it in a future video. You just put update data and it will go ahead and put this in the MDT as you update it. So if you update it somewhere else in your callout, you just put this info again and then update data. So if you change your location or change your response time, you would do that. I'll just keep it here for this video. Your export is the same way, but we do have the option of adding a configure file now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So just build your project just like you would in our last video. So we just build our project. We're going to show it in Explorer, and we're actually going to go get our project from here in our release tab. So you can see YouTube tutorial onenetdll here. If you don't know how to export, please go watch our last video on how to export. All right, so we have this exported now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. And we're going to name this whatever our callout's name. In, our, in my example, it's just YouTube tutorial one. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. This technically does not need to be the name of your callout, but I do recommend making it so users don't get confused. So then inside this folder, what we're going to do is we're going to drag in this YouTube tutorial onenetdll into the folder. We can close out this other folder. So you can see this is in here now. Now, back on the API document that we went on earlier, if you go to the wiki page, or if you even click for more info here, you can see it's changed, important changes. So you can see they have uh, changed a bunch of the names and stuff to different things. That's really cool. All right, so what about configure files? Because I know you're all wondering about this. Well, if you scroll down, you can see there is an example configure file at the bottom of this file and you can see it is right here call out config so you can see now you can include this config.json inside of your file let me show you how you can do this so you go into your youtube tutorial one or whatever your folder name is right click but make sure before we do this make sure you go to view and file name extensions are on i say this in every video that's a very important thing to have and it's very useful so you're going to right click go to new text document highlight the whole thing and name it config.json and go ahead and change and press yes then you're gonna right click and edit with Notepad++ or Notepad, depending on what you use. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this def default config over here into here. But we're gonna have to do something to make this work because if for sure some reason, Jason doesn't uh, recognize these slack slashes, which are uh, comments. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of those just so it works perfectly fine. And then considering we don't have any department set up, we're gonna change this to null right down here. So we have ignore distance false, minimum timeout zero, probability one. If we want our call out to be very, very, very uh, like always going off, we can change it to three or two or one, depending on what you want to do. And then your department will be null. Go ahead and save this. Now this is what you're going to give and put inside of your server folder. So you can see I have my call out folder here. You'll probably zip this and then upload it to the forums or something. And what we want to do is we want to, in order to get this working, we're going to go into our 5PD folder, call out folder, and you're going to drag this whole thing in here. You no longer have just the DLL files in here. You're going to drag your whole thing, which is the .net.dll and the config.json. Well, it would work if you just drag the DLL in. It doesn't make sense now that can, people can configure stuff in a configure file-like environment. So it's better to have this in the first place. All right, so if we go ahead and start our server with however you start your server, we're going to go ahead and jump in and test if this has worked successfully and if our callout has loaded. The way we're going to do this is we can either get in game, set up a department, go through that, or we can just check the debug menu and see if it will force a callout just to make sure everything has worked. So I'm going to hop in game and I'll be right back. All right, so I have gotten into the game and you can see I went on duty and our callout has worked. And if I press uh, Y, you can see it has popped up in our 9 on the dispatch that we're responding to that location. So it has successfully worked on our new version of the callout. And of course, you can force the callout inside of your force callout menu, all of that good stuff. So we know it works perfectly fine. We don't have errors in F8. You can see it, version 0.02 .02 has been loaded. And obviously, if you have issues with this, just post them in the comments or join the API support discord where you can get help with your API problems and all of this good stuff. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for uh, being interested in creating stuff for 5PD. Very appreciated. And hopefully you can come back and learn more when we release the next episode and we get a little bit more in depth of spawning vehicles, getting people into vehicles, and all that good stuff. That hopefully will be coming later this week or next week, depending on my time frame. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.